Okay, here we are again, Pastor Richard again, still in Guayaquil, Ecuador. Uh, we are uh, doing our best to walk through this. Um, it's ta it takes a little bit more time than you think it is. Things always have to be explained if we're gonna get it, but, but we're to study to show ourselves approved unto God, rightly dividing the word of truth, and that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna continue to do that. Um, we got all that stuff behind us in that last, in that last teaching, and now we're gonna do um, Jonah chapter two, and we're gonna, we're gonna see the comparison uh, with that and Psalm 18. I'm gonna have to try to get to the scriptures here in Psalm 18. Um, I mark my Bible up a lot, so sometimes I, it's hard for me to read, but I'm gonna do my best to get there. Um, but I'm gonna start walking through this. Uh, again, um, what I'm about to show you now is literally what happened with Jesus on the cross. Uh, everybody could see from Psalm 22, everybody could see the outward things that were going on. Now these things that are gonna be explained in Psalm 18 and in, pardon me, 2 Samuel 22, all of these things are the things that happened in the spirit world after he died, the things that could not be seen with the, with the human eye. So, uh, you know, it's like, it's like I've got, um, uh, if, I, if I move aside here, I got a light shining and you can see if I hold my hand, I can hold my hand up in front of the light and there's a shadow. And, and that's, what, that's what every story in the Bible is. And specifically these stories in, in Psalm 18 and 2 Samuel 22, they are what we call types and shadows where the light shines on a story and, and it casts a picture. You can see clearly that that thing behind on the wall is a hand. It's a fist. It's a thumb. You can, well, I'm kind of blocking my thumb. There it is. It's my thumb. But you can't, you can't, you can't touch it. And, and, and everything in the word of God is this way. The entire word of God is types and shadows. The entire word of God is, uh, is written this way so that you can see the things that happen in the spirit world, even though you can't see the spirit world. Some people have the discernment of spirits. One of the gifts of the Holy Spirit is the, is, the, is the discernment of spirits. I don't have that gift. I have never seen an angel. I've never seen things in the spirit world, but I see things in the spirit world all the time because of the types and the shadows, the, the pictures that God creates. And then the Holy Spirit reveals to me that this is what this means. This I'm showing you a picture of this. So Psalm 18 is and 2 Samuel 22 are literally a, a video, a, a moving picture of Jesus when he is at the cross. And, and so I'm gonna read Jonah chapter two again because I want you to hear it. And, and I want you to understand that once we get through Jonah chapter two, those 10 verses, we're gonna jump into Psalm 18. And where I put emphasis on things, I want you to listen to the emphasis that I'm putting in, in Psalm 18. It's powerful. Jonah chapter two, verse one. Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of the fish's belly and said, I cried by reason of my affliction unto the Lord. And he heard me out of the belly of hell, cried I, and you heard my voice. For you had cast me into the deep, for you had cast me into the deep in the midst of the seas and the floods compassed me about. All your billows and all your waves passed over me. Then I said, I am cast out of your sight, yet I will look again toward your holy temple. The waters compassed me about, even to the soul. The depth closed round about. The weeds were wrapped around my head. I went down to the bottom of the mountains. The earth with her bars was about me forever. You have brought me, un you have brought me up. You have brought up my life from corruption, O Lord, my God. When my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord and my prayer came in unto thee into your holy temple. They that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy, but I will sacrifice unto you with the, with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. And the Lord spake unto the fish, and it vomited out Jonah upon the dry land. Just 
powerful. But now we're going to go, we are going to go now to Psalm 18. And Psalm 18, I want you to, I want you to understand and I want you to picture Jesus at the cross. And I want you to look at the connections between Jonah 2 and, and Psalm 18. This was written a thousand years before Jesus went to the cross. I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God, my strength, and whom I will trust. My buckler, and the horn of my salvation, and my high tower. Now listen. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. The sorrows of death compassed me. And the floods of ungodly men made me afraid. The sorrows of hell compassed me about. The snares of death prevented me. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried unto my God, and he heard my voice out of his temple. And my cry came before him, even into his ears. Then the earth shook and trembled. The foundations also of the hills moved and were shaken because he was wroth. There went up a smoke out of his nostrils and fire out of his mouth devoured. Coals were kindled by it. He bowed the heavens also and came down and darkness was under his feet. And he rode upon a cherub and did fly. Yea, he did fly upon the wings of the wind. He made darkness his secret place. His pavilion round about him were dark waters and thick clouds of the skies. At the brightness that was before him, his thick clouds passed hailstones and coals of fire. The Lord also thundered in the heavens and the highest gave his voice, hailstones and coals of fire. Yea, he sent out arrows and scattered them. He shot out lightnings and discomfited them. Then the channels of waters were seen and the foundations of the world were discovered at your rebuke, O Lord, at the blast of the breath of your nostrils. He sent from above. He took me. He drew me out of many waters. He delivered me from my strong enemy and from them which hated me. For they were too strong for me. They prevented me in the day of my calamity. But the Lord was my stay. He brought me forth also into a large place. He delivered me because he delighted in me. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness. Jesus is the only one that had the righteousness to be rewarded by God according to his own righteousness. According to the cleanness of my hands, he has recompensed me. For I have kept the ways of the Lord and have not wickedly departed from my God. For all his judgments were before me and I did not put away his statutes from me. I was also upright before him and I kept myself from my iniquity. Therefore has the Lord recompensed me, paid me back, according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands in his eyesight. With the merciful, you will show yourself merciful. And with the upright man, you will show yourself upright. With the pure, you will show yourself pure. And with the froward, you will show yourself froward. For you will save the afflicted people, but will bring down the high looks. And I can I could go on all the way to verse 49, but I don't need to. What I want to do right now is I want to go back. I, I know you had to have picked up on, on some of these redundancies, but I'm going to go back to them piece by piece now. In Jonah chapter 2, then prayed unto the Lord, then, then Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of the fish's belly. I move over to Psalm, uh, Psalm 18, verse 3. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised, so shall I be saved from my enemies. Verse two of Jonah, and I said, I cried by reason of my affliction unto the Lord, and he heard me out of the belly of hell, cried I, and you heard my voice. Verse five says, the sorrows of hell compassed me about, the snares of death prevented me. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried unto my God. He heard my voice out of his temple, and my cry came before him, even into his ears. Verse three in Jonah, for you had cast me into the deep, into the midst of the seas, and the floods compassed me about. All your billows and all your waves passed over me. 
The sorrows, Psalm 18, verse four, the sorrows of death compassed me and the floods of ungodly men made me afraid. It's a repeat from what I just said before. The sorrows of hell compassed me about and the snares of death prevented me. Also, you'll remember that in Matthew 27 and in Psalm 22, he, when he cried out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? For you have cast me into the deep, Jonah said. Verse four of Jonah, then I said, I I am cast out of your sight. Again, the same reference to Psalm 22 and Matthew 27. Yet I will look again to your holy temple. When I go back into verse six, that's when, that's when Jesus, when he's on the cross, you have to understand that, that these floods of ungodly men that made him afraid, when the snares of death prevented him, when all this was going on, he is on the cross, he's drawing his last breath and the demonic host, thinking that they've won, is coming up and, and they're wrapping around his body and around his head, literally taking, sucking the spirit and soul of Jesus out of him at the cross. And they think they've won. They think they have championed. They think that they have killed the prophet, killed Messiah. He's done. It's over. But it wasn't over because he said he cried unto the Lord his God multiple times. You'll see here in Psalm 18 where he says, I cried unto the Lord my God out of his temple. In Jonah chapter 2, multiple times where he says, I cried unto the Lord unto his holy temple and he heard me. But where it gets good for me is, is back here when because I can see all these direct comparisons. In Jonah chapter two, verse six, I went down to the bottom of the mountains. The earth with her bars was about me forever. Do you remember, we just talked about first Peter chapter three, verse 18 and 19, how it said that he descended into the lower parts of the earth and preached to the spirits that were in prison. The spirits that were in prison were behind what? If you're in prison, you're behind what? You're behind bars and it says I went down to the bottom of the mountains the earth with her bars was about me forever I was completely surrounded within the confines of this jail this prison of death yet you have brought up my life from corruption O Lord my God if I if I go here I think it's to verse 17. It said that he, he brought him and drew him into a large place. What do you suppose that large place was? The large place was paradise, was paradisos. Remember the guy on the cross that said, that said, Lord, will you remember me when you enter into your kingdom today? He repented at the, at the very last second, he repents. And what did Jesus say to him? Today, Today, you will be with me in paradise. Where was paradise? Where did Jesus go on that day? He descended into the lower parts of the earth and he did what? He preached to the spirits that were in prison. He preached the gospel to them that were dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, yet live unto God in the spirit. God reached down. When it, when it says that the... Uh, uh, Verse seven in Psalm 18, then the earth shook and trembled. The foundations also of the hills moved and were shaken because he was wroth. There went smoke up out of his nostrils and fire out of his mouth devoured. Coals were kindled by it. He bowed the heavens also. He came down and darkness was under his feet. Remember at the cross, there was darkness from I think the sixth hour till the ninth hour. Yea, he did fly upon the wings of the wind. He made darkness his secret place. His pavilion round about him were dark waters and thick clouds of the skies. At the brightness that was before him, his thick clouds passed, hailstones and coals of fire. The Lord also thundered in the heavens. It thundered. It was, everybody knew this. When, when this happened, it was, it was such a shaking. It says the ground shook and that the, the veil was ripped, was torn in two. You have to understand the veil was 24 inches thick. And for that thing to be ripped in two, you think that was silent? You think that happened without noise? The things that went on during this time were unbelievable. 
And it says, he sent out his arrows and he scattered them. He shot out lightnings and discomfited them. Watch this. Then the, cha then the channels of waters were seen and the foundations of the world were discovered at your rebuke, O Lord. God the Father reached in to the earth. As Jesus has been, the, the sorrows of death compassed him about and were literally drawing him down into the pit of hell. And he's experiencing this torment for you so that you never have to. When he was made a sacrifice for you, he sacrificed everything. He, why do you think when he was in the garden and he said, if there be any other way, let this cup pass from me. I need to do a teaching on the cup because it's powerful. It comes from the, the law of jealousies. We're gonna go through that later. But Jesus drank the bitter cup. And you remember when he told Peter, the, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And he went out into the garden and he prayed so fervently that, that the capillaries in his face burst. Because anything that's not of faith is sin, according to Romans. According to Paul in the book of Romans, anything that's not of faith is sin. And, and that's why in the book of Hebrews, it says that, that the sin that so easily besets us, it talks about the sin, that, that we have been saved from that, we, that, that the sin that so easily besets us is what? Is a lack of faith, is unbelief. It's not believing. And Jesus paid the price. It says that we have not suffered unto blood like, like he has, resisting sin or standing against sin. Jesus went through everything for you so that you never had to. He, he suffered everything in his body, all the pain, all the suffering, all the damage in his body was for your healing. All of the things that went on Every bit of sin, he was manifest as sin. It says he was made sin for you that you would be made the righteousness of God. When he was made sin, he literally descended first into the tormenting side of hell and experienced complete separation from the Father, which had never happened from the beginning of time and, and before. And he's now completely separated from the Father completely separated in the torments of hell, yet he's crying out to God and crying out to God into his holy temple. And God was ticked off and God came flying down and he split this thing wide open and he reached his hand in. You wonder why there were hundreds of people that it says that the dead were raised and were walking around town at the cross. This is why the Roman centurion, when he saw this stuff goes on, he went, of a truth, this is the Christ. You life, literal life itself, God the Father, life itself reached his hand down into the earth and he picked Jesus out from, from that tormenting side of hell, gave him back that life, that power, that authority, and he, therefore Jesus, crushed and made a show of all of the demonic host openly is what it says in Colossians chapter two. And God set him up in a large place in the scriptures. He sent me from above, verse 16. He took me, drew me out of many waters. He delivered me from my strong enemy, from them which hated me. That's the demons in hell. For they were too strong for me. As a man, you have no, you have no power over this whatsoever. None. They prevented me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my stay. He brought me forth also into a large place. Paradisos, paradise. And he delivered me because he delighted in me. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness. There's no man on the earth. David wrote this and David didn't have his own righteousness. And he was the first one to tell you that. You can read the rest of the Psalms and he'll tell you what a sorry dog he was. And God loved him because he had the heart of God, because he was repentant, but he was still a fallen man and he knew it. And he knew he didn't have his own righteousness. According to the cleanness of my hands, God said that, that you can't build me a house because you have bloody hands. You have been a man of war your whole life. So obvious, this isn't David. This is Jesus speaking through David a thousand years before going to the cross. For I have kept the ways of the Lord. 
Jesus kept every single way of the Lord. And I have not wickedly departed from my God. Jesus never departed from his God. For all his judgments were before me, and I did not put away his statutes from me. I was also upright before him. Jesus was completely upright before the Father. And I kept myself from my iniquity. Therefore, the Lord has recompensed or paid me back according to my righteousness, says Jesus, according to the cleanness of my hands in his eyesight. What I want you to see is that, that Jesus not only took the physical punishment for you in the earth so that you could be healed, so that you could be made whole. He was made poor that you would be made rich. God wants you rich. And the, and the preachers that are out there, and I've seen them that are screaming that, that it's a, a prosperity gospel and it's wicked and evil, that's, that's garbage because it takes money to spread the gospel. It costs money for me to have an iPad sitting in front of me right now to do this. Without money, I can't do it. And thank God, God has blessed me with prosperity to do this. He was made poor that I would be made what? Rich. He was beaten and broken so that I'd be made whole. And he also went into the lowest parts of the earth. He went into hell itself. He was completely encompassed by Satan and his demons so that I would never, ever, ever have to experience the torment of hell. And then he cried out to his God who lifted him up, set him in a large place. And I love this. I know it's, I'm repeating myself, but he preached the gospel to them that were dead. If, if we go back to 1 Peter 3, 19, it says that he descended into the lower parts of the earth to preach to the spirits that were in prison, that at one time were disobedient. It says sometime in the King Jimmy, but that means at one time. That at one time were disobedient when the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah. If you go back and read that account, it says that the thought of man's heart was evil continually. The only righteous man on the earth was Noah. And Noah, Noah's family was spared for Noah's righteousness. Noah's family was not righteous. Within, within, within I don't know, hours or days of, of the whole Noah thing after the flood, one of Noah's kids did something that's just, I don't even want to talk about it. We'll talk about it later. But, but the whole family's messed up. But Noah was righteous. You have to understand that Jesus Christ descended into the lower parts of the earth. Why? To preach to the spirits that were dead. I actually heard one time a Catholic bishop, I'm not putting anybody down in the Catholic church, but this is just, it's a fact. I heard a Catholic bishop say, that he could not reconcile the genocide that God performed on the earth at the flood. He couldn't reconcile it. And, 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 and I, I, I pray he gets his video <laughs> because the true and the living God wiped all that physically out in the earth. But in Romans chapter five, it very specifically says that that sin was in the world, but sin cannot be imputed or held to your account where there is no law. And there was no law on the earth at that time. There was none. It wasn't there. It came 2,500 years later. So from Adam to Moses, anybody in there that didn't personally know God, you could personally know God. Abraham knew God. Other people, I can show. There were some people like Cain that knew God, knew him and rejected him and killed his brother. There were people like Lamech who wrote a song about killing people and said, if, if, the, if the mark on Cain is, is sevenfold, it's going to be seven, 70 fold for Lamech. He's bragging. Some people just hated God. I, I know where they're at and, and it's not good. But anybody else, anybody in the earth, anybody in the earth that, that was from Adam to Moses, Sin was in the world, but sin could not be imputed or held to their account where there was no law. Where did they go? They went to paradise. They went to paradisos. Why? They never had the opportunity to accept or deny the Lord Jesus Christ. And God is not going to send anybody to hell that doesn't choose to go there. Nobody gets sent 
people choose to go there. So all of those people, the example from scripture was the people that at one time were disobedient when the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah. That just shows you that there's an entire company of people sitting there waiting for the gospel to be preached to them that are dead because they never had the opera because Jesus hadn't shown up yet. The price hadn't been paid yet. The fullness of time hadn't come yet. But when Jesus got here, he paid the price. He descended into the lower parts of the earth. He, he, he had to endure the torment of hell until the father reached him out and set him in that large place and made him king of kings, Lord of lords. And in that large place, all of those people that were there, whoever they were, all of the people that never had an opportunity to accept or deny up till that point heard the gospel preached to them that were dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh because we're the ones that have the ability to make that decision. And so they were, they were given the same ability as men in the flesh. Why? To live, to have the opportunity to live unto God in the spirit. That's because God is good. God is great. God loves people. God loves all people. That flood was not a genocide. That flood was nearly checkmate. And the devil thought he had God in checkmate. And the reality was God flooded the earth in judgment. The only thing he's reserved unto himself. And he started over with Noah and it wasn't checkmate because God will not, he will not lose. The devil has already lost. He's already gone down and you now have the power and the authority. I'm gonna to touch on this real quick. Grace, a lot of churches say that grace is unmerited favor and I don't wanna argue this, but but it says that, J, that Jesus in John 1.14, that we beheld Jesus the word, the capital W word, okay? As the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And I'm sorry, Jesus was not full of unmerited favor. Jesus was full of the power of God where we have none in this earth. And as a man, as a human, as a real man, man enough to die on that cross and man enough to go to a burning hell, Jesus took that place and did that, and did that for us. What, what a, man, what a marvelous, marvelous work. I'm gonna pray for you because we're running out of time. Father God, I thank you for these people. Uh, man, I thank you for the, for, the, for the reach that we have, the, the people in Africa that we've connected with, the people in India that we've connected with, Father God. They, even all my friends here in the here in the States, Father God, I just thank you for whoever's at the, at the end of the sound of my voice, Father God. I just believe for them to be ministered to. I believe for this to connect with them. I believe for them to see the price that was actually paid for them, how that Jesus suffered all these things so that we never had to suffer any of them. We make the choice to accept or deny we make the choice to serve the true and the living God. We get to do this and we get to see it in this life. And I thank you, Father God, that you've given us the ability to see this in your scriptures, that we can see the types and the shadows. We can see your spirit world play out, Father God, in real time as we read these stories, Father God. And they come together and out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, we let we let the scriptures establish your truth in this earth. I, I bless these people, Father God. I speak a blessing over all of them, Father God. I pray that they be in health and prosper, physically, financially prosper, to the same measure that their soul prospers, Father God, that not only would they do well, but that they could, they could use those finances, Father God, to spread the word of God and to spread your goodness and this good word throughout the entire earth in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.